Hello everyone and welcome to an exciting new edition of Assembly Assembly's YouTube channel. Uh, this week we're going to be talking about... Um, this week we're going to be talking about... Um, I have no idea what we're going to be talking about, quite frankly. Usually when I start up YouTube videos I have... Uh, I kind of know what I'm going to talk about, but, but not this time. And uh, so I think to myself, well, what should I talk about? Uh, queer things. Let's talk about queer things. And, and so I end up talking about queer things a lot. And um, which I, mean, I have no real problem with necessarily. Uh, but it does get tying after a while. And that, that's part of the reason why I um, am not doing gender queer chat anymore. Apologies. As enjoyable as it was. Um, I'm sick of talking about gender queer things. Uh, so I'll, I'll leave it to other people. I'm glad to see that, uh, I'm really glad to see that Ricky is on it. I think I have to slow down talking. I'm talking too fast. I'm glad to see that Ricky is on Gender Queer Chat. That's awfully fun. And all the other people, of course. I'm not belittling them by any means. Um, so keep on rocking. <laughs> hey, um, yeah, Gender Queer Chat, keep on, on rocking. Um, I, uh, oh, I know what I can talk about. Um, okay, so I have a, um, part of me wants to do things that are fairly engineering oriented, and part of me wants to do things that are fairly scientific oriented, and I find that there is a, um, bit of a struggle between those two things. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, well, I I'm kind of, I've started this project um, that, um, I've been thinking about this for a while, and whenever I think about things for far too long, uh, technical things, when I think about programming things for too long, I find that I have this entire idea of how things should work, and that's not how things work at all, and, uh, so, um, I've been, uh, there's this particular debugger, this particular analyzer called Valgrind, that I haven't heard of up until, um, the, uh, SSL, um, the uh, Debian implementation of SSL, they had, uh, they lowered the entropy on their their uh, random number generator, which generated their SSL keys to so, like a ridiculous amount of, of guessability. And uh, the reason why this happened is because someone was debugging their program with Valgrind. Valgrind emulates uh, um, hardware uh, and it runs your program and um, it. Uh, is it, it's available to do uh, a level of analysis that is very very difficult to do on a native machine. One thing that it does is it um, checks to see what is initialized, what has the potential to be uninitialized. And this person was uh, walking their program through Valgrind and found uh, walking, uh, running their program through Valgrind and found that. Um, there were a lot of uninitialized things in the random number generator in the SSL implementation that was on their machine, the Debian SSL implementation. So they submitted a patch, uh, which the, that, that was there for a reason, and that, that reduced the, the entropy and the randomness. Um, and so that's how I, I heard of it. Um, there's, a, there's a couple of other things that it does. Well, another thing that it does is uh, called cache grind or cache check, I forget. I haven't actually run Valgrind in a while because there's no OpenBSD port. And uh, so I'll run it occasionally on my free, free BSD virtual machine. Um, but that's right, slow. And, uh, but the, I think it was called cache grind. Let's just call it cache grind. Cache grind, cache grind emulated a caching paradigm and, and uh, it's uh, collected sort of statistics uh, and analytics from your program running under its emulator, and uh, it looked at the debugging symbols and said, hey, you have an 18% chance of a cache uh, read miss uh, at this particular line of code, or something like that. It was, it was, it was really, it's really cool, uh, but it's fucking slow, is what, what it is, and um, so if, you're, if your program requires any bit of interaction to get to the point where it could benefit from a right awesome cache analysis, um, no, <laughs> there's no interaction, you can't interact with your program, this is not going to work, and, uh, um, so I'm 
I've been thinking about replacing that for a while and I'm starting to uh, just mainly experiment with P-Trace and, and things like this. P-Trace being the Unix uh, idea behind debugging where you have a parent that can um, run a program that wants to be P-Traced and uh, you can suspend it and analyze its memory and, and whatnot. And one thing that you do in Unix is if you want to set a breakpoint, um, you, um, you you replace the code where your breakpoint will be with a trap, and that draws the control into um, what is p tracing your program, and uh, then you can debug it that way. So, well, why don't we just put traps at uh, either um, either the conditional branch? It'll either fall through or jump to another another address. So why don't we just put traps in either one and see what, which one it traps on. So we'll, we'll load a program, um, uh, change its image uh, so that the first branch from the entry point, um, conditional branch from the entry point, has two traps. And uh, then we'll run it, wait till it traps. Uh, once it traps, uh, run the code again through our caching, analog, our caching emulator to, to pick up the caching paradigm and the misses and whatnot and uh, then replace the traps with the original code or at least the, the both of them um, then go to the next branch where it would be and and, and continue and uh, so that's that's the idea the 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 idea behind that is it's not full emulation which is slow uh, and it's it's localized so you can do a bunch of code at once instead of an instruction at, at once and um, and so we'll see how fast that is, uh, which is interesting. I haven't actually written a debugger before, so we'll, we'll see. And then another uh, part of me is like, well, that's a, an awfully, that's very engineering-esque. That's an engineering problem. And <laughs> you're not really changing anything with that, are you? And uh, so in the back of my head, another part of me is thinking about um, the... Uh, the hierarchical uh, sort of memory store that is supposed uh, to be in the neurocortex uh, the, by the guy who founded uh, Palm, uh, where you have uh, homogeneous uh, bits or nodes uh, that just in arrangement have a hierarchical way of communicating with each other to get from to get to a single homogeneous bit you have to go through a hierarchy and uh, each node um, does temporal prediction um, on its input and, and the most nodes is sensory input and uh, so like uh, based on input it would the little tiny nodes would predict that oh this and then the nodes above that um, would predict that those nodes would this and it would kind of ripple up through the hierarchy and the hierarchy might um, at the top would predict, oh, well, these, probably this, and that would ripple down and cause behavior or ripple back and, and whatnot, which is an interesting idea. Um, and the, the, um, the world of, of artificial intelligence has been stagnant for a long time. And uh, so I was thinking, well, <laughs> um, sort of a temporal spatial analysis can be done on, on uh, waveform going through a, a FOIA um, transform with the sort of the spectrum. So that's 2D. It's like it's like a retina, right? And uh, so like, well, you, maybe you can make a speech recognizer. Um, and uh, but that's that's a huge fucking problem, and that's that's a lot of work, and that's a lot of stuff that I haven't done before. And uh, so it's rather daunting. And so then I'm like, oh, well, just focus on uh, things that you can do, like uh, just engineering things, like your debugger. And uh, so I'm like, all right, well, let's just let's just do the debugger. And uh, so I kind of go back and forth, <laughs> quite frankly. But uh, but the, but the debuggers are fun. I haven't actually written a debugger, and uh, so I'm I probably should learn a lot about uh, how debuggers actually work. Um, it'll be especially fun having a debugger in a Unix environment. Um, I'm just keen on uh, GNU debugger <laughs> and just do backtraces and occasionally print a variable. Uh, but uh, but having a, a analysis of, of what lines of code access what memory um, 
what lines of code have, uh, what probability they have for cache misses and stuff like that is, is awfully useful. And uh, so it would be fun, maybe a good tool will come, come from it. Then maybe, in the future, I'll do more scientific things. Nerr. <laughs> but uh, probably not. Um, but, the, but it's interesting, hierarchical memory stores are, are rather interesting. Um, the advantage there, you are assuming that the world is hierarchical in some way, where the sort of Turing-esque uh, tape store, linear storage that, uh, that, uh, um, that uh, modern computers deal with is assuming of nothing. <laughs> And therefore not very suited to to um but whatever uh take care and uh we'll see it oh yeah I'm, I'm going to see going to uh my girlfriend's uh painting class tomorrow so that will be fun uh i'm looking forward to it i'll tell you how that went all right so next video i'll tell you how that went and uh take care everyone Bye bye